Hey guys, so welcome to this new video. Um, in this video, we're going to talk details about the ISU 22 subject test um, and what subjects you have to do, how the whole process works. Essentially, we're going to talk all details about SAT2 subject test because there is a lot of confusion, especially with the grading. Okay, let's get started. So, first things first, College Board administers these exams. They administer the SAT1, SAT2, and a lot of other exams. So, we're just going to load their website. It's like right here. This is how the websites look when you're going to enter. You're just going to click on SAT subject test. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to register for your own account. That's the main thing you want to know. You're going to have to register for your own account. Um, and once you make an account, you can register to write an SAT. I don't want to talk too much about registration right now. Um, I just want to talk more about the subject tests and how they work. Uh, let's go. Okay, so subject tests. I would suggest, highly suggest, reading through this student guide. It's a great way to understand how the subject tests work. What is their scoring? What are prep books you can use for them? Like it's just a complete guide. It gives you all the rules, whether you're allowed to use a calculator, um, what happens if your calculator malfunctions, you know, everything is in here. So what I want you to just skim through it. So basically they tell you that you're gonna lose points for getting a question wrong. And they do have five choice questions. So basically you have five options to choose from. So if you get a question, uh, if you get a question wrong, you lose zero point two five points. But if there's a four choice question where there's four options for you in a multiple choice question, you're gonna use one. They're gonna lose. You're gonna lose one third of a point, basically. Um, this is what you call negative marking. Um, before the test day, um, they tell you what to bring and all all the information you need to know. And they go subject by subject. So if I show you, it's a long guide, but it's definitely really helpful. So let's see. They're talking about literature. Um, they tell you the format and content, they tell you the topics in it, the percentage of the test, how much of that like topic is covered in that test. Um, they give you practice questions here, a couple, like very little. Um, and essentially you get an idea of uh, how the test for this specific is going to go. Like, let's say, let's look at math. Okay, so um, they tell you number and operations algebra and function. So there are 50 multiple choice questions. Um, and then they tell you, okay, in math level one, the number in operations, only 10 to 14% of the test is that. The difference comes in algebra and functions where in math level one, there's less of that. And in math level two, it's a lot of algebra and functions. So you get to see these little differences in topics. And depending on what you're really good at, you can choose math level one or level two. Um, if you want something that's easier, Level one is definitely the way to go, but if you want something that is a little challenging, like level two, um, the math in that is much more challenging than the math in level one. So it just depends on what you choose. I just happened, I just, you know, did a lot of like, the, the topics for me, like the topics in the math level two were much more familiar to me, so I decided to choose that. Um, but it really depends on you. And the other thing with math level two is because it's a harder test, it's easier to get a higher score in it, if you get what I mean, right? Um, like, uh, because, because of the fact that it's a harder test, a score of 620 is easier to get. Like, I'll explain that whole idea later with the scoring and everything. So using a calculator, they tell you about this calculator you're supposed to use, you can use and whatnot. So we're gonna talk about details of each test, but this is the student guide, definitely look over it. I'll link it. Okay, so let's talk, let's start with biology exam. So it's called biology E slash M. Um, so there's 80 questions in total, multiple choice. You got 60 minutes. Um, 60 of the 80 questions are common. So they're just biology, you got to do them. And then you got 20 questions specialized for each section. So there's basically 40 questions. There's a total, um, I don't know how many, Okay, so basically it's 80 plus 20, which is a uh, which is 100. Sorry, you do 80 questions, but you have a total of 100 questions on the test. But you don't do, you know, after the 60 questions, you don't do the 40 questions right after. You're gonna have to choose between biology E and M. So there's 20 questions for E, there's 20 questions for M, and you choose which section you want to do. E is ecology, and M is 
uh, basically microbiology. I would not recommend taking the M just because it's harder and you have less time. I would definitely take biology E and that's what I did. And biology E is easier. It's about populations, ecology, you know, communities and whatnot. Um, that's what I would recommend. But it's definitely up to you. Biology E is easier, so I don't know why you would choose the harder option. Just choose the easier one. There, even if you're good at like microbiology, just don't take microbiology. It's just going to be a tough time for you. Um, so important notes, when the exams are offered in August, October, November, December, May, and June. Okay. So one thing to know is the one in August is not actually offered for international students. So if you don't live in America, you probably won't be able to do the one in August. Um, calculators are not permitted. Problem solving requires simple numerical calculations. Um, and also know that measurements are in the metric system. Okay, let's talk about chemistry. Six, uh, 85 multiple choice questions. You have 60 minutes um, offered in the same months. Um, calculator is not allowed, even though, even, even in my province, I was allowed to use a calculator for my board examination, which is called a diploma in Alberta. But in the SET, two subject tests for chemistry and bio and even physics, you're not allowed to use a calculator. So I want you to get that inside your head so you start brushing up your mental math skills because you're going to have to do that. Um, so problem solving requires simple numerical calculation, metric system, and you get a periodic table. That's all you get. The other information in my province, we get a whole booklet with a bunch of information that's really helpful for the exam. In the SAT 2 subject test, you're not going to get that. You're just going to get a simple periodic table, okay? Um, and that's that's basically it. You're not going to get any more things with, along with that. So um, there is special types of questions on the chemistry subject test that I want to address. Um, they're called the relationship analysis questions. So you're going to get two statements, um, and you're going to have to say whether statement one is true or false, whether statement two is true or false. If statement one is true and statement two is true, you got to see, well, is statement one true because, is statement one true because of like statement two? So it's it's a correct, it's, it's a relationship analysis question where you have to understand if statement one is a correct explanation of statement two. I'll, I'll try and get some examples for you guys, but you're going to have to check these relationship analysis questions for yourself. There are special type of questions only in the chemistry subject test. So next thing, math level one and math level two. Okay, so in this one, you're allowed to use a calculator. So if you have a normal Texas instrument, you know, graphing calculator, that should be good to go. Um, that one is allowed. Um, so you can have a TI-84, TI-83. Those are allowed. You can check if you have a different cal calculator just to see if it's allowed. You're going to get 50 multiple choice questions. You got 60 minutes. Um, and that's that's basically it. Um, math level two, 50 multiple choice, 60, uh, 60 minutes. Um, once again, calculator is permitted. Okay, so I just want to talk about the level one and two overlap. Okay, so there's certain topics that are in both level one and level two tests. So you're going to get elementary algebra, three-dimensional ge geometry, coordinate geometry, statistics, and basic trigonometry. Um, those are topics that are in both of them, okay? Topic bro breakdown. Although some questions may be appropriate for both of the emphasis for level two is on more advanced content. Just to give you an understanding, level two is much more difficult. There's no question about it. But if you've done more of that math, it might be easier for you to do level two than level one because level one may have a lot of new topics you've never seen. Like, that's what I felt. I didn't I didn't know many of the topics in level one. So that's why I thought level two was better. And also because it was easier to get a higher, you know, I guess, mark on it, like in the sense of scoring. So preparing for the test, you can get the official college board prep books that the college board makes and they give you real examination, real subject tests that have been given to past students. So that's that's your real stuff. OK, that I suggest practicing towards the end when you're getting really close to the test date because those will really give you an understanding of whether or not where where you are on the score scale then you have princeton review kaplan barons these are just different companies i would suggest finding them in your local library because you're going to save a lot of money don't go get a, buy these books because you're not probably never going to use them again okay so these are my suggested books 
Math Level 2, Chemistry and Biology, Princeton Review uh, for Biology and uh, Math Level 2, and for Chemistry, I suggest McGraw-Hill, okay? And that's it.